For Christmas in July, I have 10 Dollar Tree Christmas DIYs you've got to see. Today we're making Christmas tag signs. Keep watching! For option number one, I'm going to take these vintage doilies, a box top from Dollar Tree, and a summer tag sign from Dollar Tree. That's how we're going to start. Just pointing out there that there's a faded area, but that won't matter because we have a way to hide that. I'm going to carefully pull those apart. I think they're kind of fragile. I'm going to cut off the tag, I mean the, uh, the hanger. and decide where we want to place it. You can get doilies, I think they're cloth, from Dollar Tree and they might have some paper ones too. Pretty much going to use the same technique for this. So I've decided to slide that box top up to be closer to the top. And I'm going to trim this doily. And there we go. And then for the bottom, I'm going to use this one. Good old trusty glue stick from Dollar Tree. I'm going to gently add that down. I'm not going to be bearing down on this with the edge of that ruler because I don't want to tear those little delicate pieces so I'm just kind of pressing and pressing with my hands to stick that down on there and we're going to do the same thing with the bottom I think that these doilies give it a a pretty snowflake look and I haven't seen this done and I watch a lot of other youtubers for inspiration and I haven't seen this done yet so I thought this would be something fun to do. We're going to take the edges off of the box. You can cut these off or you can use an X-Acto knife or a rotary cutter. I don't have one of those yet. And then you have pieces left for crafting with later or you can do like I did and use a couple of those pieces to trim this out once you get it on the box on the tag. This is pretty easy to cut out. It has, you just cut right along that fold. Be sure that you make it a nice clean cut as good as you can though so you don't leave any, you know, any of that green on there on the sides. We want those gray sides to be flush with the sides of the sign. Okay, so to hold this down, I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue. This will easily pop off if I want to change this out at some point because this is regular a regular, it's not Gorilla Glue in other words, so it should come off pretty easy. So now I'm trying to decide where I want to put my border. A little hot glue there and just press that in place. And I'm going to do the same thing on the top. I'm going to take my sanding block from Dollar Tree. Again, I'm all, I'm gonna cry if I don't find some more of these soon. I might have to go to Amazon and look for them because I love these. They give the best edging, really give a nice look. This is in a fast speed, so you can't really tell, but I am being very gentle around the doily so that I don't pull it and tear it. And the glue stick has worked well to keep it in its place. 
So when you go over the green there on the edge and on the edge of the box with that sander, it gives it kind of a white aged look, which I really like. And I think it's great for a rustic or farmhouse look, giving it a little history, if you will. Looks like it's been around a while. Age to perfection. And there we go. So I wanted to add a little extra trim here and I'm taking a little of this jute cord, cutting a piece long enough that we can wrap to the back so we don't have to put any glue on the front. So if you hold it tightly in place, then it'll be in the same spot when you flip it over, just using the little extra corners of those box top sides as little band-aids to hold down my, my cord there. And we want to do that on all the pieces. There you go. This bow came off of another project, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how I made this so you can make one similar to it for yours. Just use some wired ribbon and you're going to need some jingle bells, whatever color and style you like. And see that I tore it off of another project. But since it's already made, I'm just going to use it. Now I'll show you how to make the bow. You're going to take a length of wired ribbon, and this is about, hmm, I'd say about eight inches. You're going to fold it over into a loop or a circle and glue those ends together. Let it cool for a second, cut another piece. Lay it on top, squish them together, and then take a piece of cord, ribbon, twist tie, pipe cleaner, whatever you got, and put a knot in it. You can trim that off. Dovetail the ends of the bow. And then you're going to take a little bit of hot glue and add some in the middle. That's all you have to do. So I'm going to take this little stick or this little dowel here that I had in my craft stash. I'm going to gently poke a hole back through the doily so that I can make a hanger. I'm going to use a little hot glue on the end of this cord and twist it. That'll give it a nice point that won't fray so that I can easily thread it back through the original holes that the original hanger came through. And you certainly use the original cord if you want to and put it right back on. I want my knots to be in the front, so I'm just gonna make a little loose knot on each side. When you slide them back through, you can see the knot on the front. And trim off your little pieces that remain and we're gonna put the bow down now. So you wanna get that centered and just put that bow up there to complete your look. So this is look number one. This is our red truck Christmas tag. That is a beautiful box top. And to think of someone just tearing through it, uh, just breaks my heart. So here is our second option. Using the same package of doilies, we're going to get two of those out. And they're really stuck together, so be sure that you, you just have one layer or you're going to have issues when you try to glue it. I want to put these off center. And I'm going to add a metal snowflake and a jingle all the way metal piece that came off of another sign from Dollar Tree. I'm going to take dark steel and satin nickel. And I'm going to take those outside and give each of those metal pieces a quick spray with the dark steel and then let it dry, go back outside and spray paint a little bit of the nickel on top, just a light dusting of it. Then I'm going to take my glue stick and I'm going to put this down while 
my metal pieces are drying. Again, patting down, pressing down to make sure that this glue is grabbing on to this paper. Be careful not to cover the entire board. Just do as much as you can and then go back along the edges where you need it. Pressing down firmly so that it gets all the little edges. You don't want anything peeling up because if it starts to peel, it could catch on something and just ruin your project. So be sure that you're really getting that down. Take your scissors and trim off. You can leave a little on the edge. Don't be, no need to be exact on this because we're gonna sand this down just like we did on the other one. Go along your edges and just cut, cut. Okay. Sanding block. Again, this is in a fast speed, but you are going to be careful with this so that you don't tear any pieces or snag any pieces and destroy your project. See, it just frays right off of there. Careful around the corners here. I had to slow it down for you to show you what it looks like, how I really do it. You got to be kind of careful with this. And it looks like it was painted on, you know, from a distance. Obviously, if you're up close, you can see that it's not, that it's an applique, but it's pretty. And to me, it does look like there are snowflakes on there. So it's all dry. First attempt I made was with the glue from Dollar Tree, which was a no-go. So I went back with my Gorilla Glue. Be careful with this. Don't put so much glue like I did. I didn't, I wanted to make sure that it stuck down, but I went a little bit overboard in some areas, which cause a little bit of bleed through. It is something that I fix and you'll see that once this is dry in a few minutes. But yeah, it was kind of kind of yucky. And to think I could have avoided it, mm, I'm hoping that you can avoid it now. Carefully place it where you want it because you don't want to slide it at all or move it once you put it down because it'll leave a mess. I just took a large plastic bag and a weight and covered this up. Once it is dry, this is how it looks. The Gorilla Glue did a fantastic job, but you can see where I have some residue here. I'm going to take a fingernail filer or an emery board and just file on that a little bit. And that's gonna soften that look. You can, you can definitely still tell, but it's not as bad. Gotta be super careful around that doily. So see if you can avoid that by just putting on a little bit less paint, that would be great. I've saved the sign that I peeled the jingle all the way from for another project. So nothing's wasted and I, I ended up with two, two projects from one which makes them about 50 cents a piece. Okay, same process as before. We're going to glue the end of our piece of twine, make a knot on the front, pull it through and trim it up on both sides. Which one of these is your favorite? I'm going to make a little bow to go on the top. These are three 12 inch pieces of jute cord. I'm just going to make a little shoestring bow here. And then I'm going to decide where I want to put it. And it's going to be in the right corner. A little hot glue keeps it in place. I certainly hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for stopping by. Welcome to all my newbies. Thank you so much to you guys who've been around from the beginning. 
and enjoy hanging out with me here on my channel. I will see you again real soon. Bye. Here's another project with Dollar Tree tags. Keep watching. We're going to start off with two of these Dollar Tree ornaments. Cute as they are, but we're going to fix them up a little bit. So I want to change these from kind of a more of a Christmas theme into a winter theme. Something that's going to last us until spring. You can use scrap paper, you can use decorative paper, you can use any types of bells and tiny ornaments that you have. You can use twine, ribbon. I'm going to use wrapping paper that I already have to cover these. We're going to start by just untying this ribbon. We can put it aside and use it again on something else. You know how these are. Sometimes the paper comes off easily, sometimes not so much. So you get a good example of both in this video. Don't worry if you're stuck with something like this because it can be fixed. Just grab some sanding paper instead of my block, which is a finder grit. I've decided to use this little bit rougher sandpaper. Make sure that you get all the glitter off and that you try to get your surface relatively smooth to the surface that's under it. Wipe off all the residue. Now to decide what we want to do with our two ornaments, how we want to make them. We'll go start with this one and we're going to cover it with this wrapping paper. I think this wrapping paper came from Dollar Tree. I could be wrong and maybe something that I got at Dirt Cheap. You going to just roughly draw a little trim here. You don't have to cut it close and I intentionally did this a little bit messy and larger than needed and then cut it out kind of sloppy to show you that that won't make a bit of difference once we get it applied. So just bend your paper against the way that it wants to roll and it'll flatten out for you a little bit. Now that we have a smooth surface on our tag, we're going to take a glue stick. You don't have to use name brand, it's just what I had nearby. You can use the Jot or any type of, even a cheap glue stick. The glue stick for me gives a nice clean finish. It doesn't seep through and drying time is relatively fast. I can still work with it and do what I need to do without having to wait. Doesn't leave bumps underneath like a glue, like a glue gun would. So it's just a smooth and neat appearance. You'll see that in just a minute. You're going to press that down take my wooden ruler and just press down and it's almost like you're ironing out the paper. You want to get it nice and flat. No bubbles underneath. Then take the sanding block and begin to sand away and downward at an angle. That's going to shear the edges of that paper off and give you a beautiful smooth clean finish. Do this all the way around and look at that. Perfect. Looks like it came right from the factory like that, doesn't it? Love it. Okay, so for the next one, here is some wrapping paper. This originally came from Target and probably in the dollar spot, but I got this from Dirt Cheap. I believe it was last year and I have used it on a different project. I'll try to link that for you because the two would match nicely in your decor. Again, just roughly cutting the border out. Because this is a light paper that you can see through, I don't want it to darken up by putting it on that brown. Plus you would see the little white residue that's left. So I'm gonna go ahead and just paint this entire thing white. And this will make the wrapping paper look more opaque 
and make our designs on there really pop. So consider painting first. You don't have to use chalk paint. That's just what I'm using, but consider painting first if you're gonna use a thin paper or something with a white background. It's really gonna make the details on your paper pop. Okay, so while that's drying, we're gonna go back to this tag with the snowflakes on it and think about how we want to embellish it. Now I'm showing you all of this because I kind of want you to see my thought process and some options that you can use yourself. All right, so this is something that I took off another ornament last year and I saved it. This came from Dollar Tree. It's frosted, so I think it looks good with the snowflakes. It looks good with the winter theme. And this ribbon, I think, is just gorgeous. I think this ribbon came from Walmart. Just going to make a little shoelace bow here. Kind of think about how I want to place that. And you can do the same. Put it in the center, put it on the bottom, off to the side whichever you choose. These are some frosted mini pine cones that came from Dollar Tree. I want to pick some of the tiny ones out because I don't want to overwhelm the top of that with huge pine cones. I want, I want mini because I want it to look nice. I guess what I'm looking for is proportion. So be sure that you poke the hole out where the tag is where the, uh, the tag hanger goes. Okay, so I'm just using some hot glue to tack that down. I'm gonna put some little, I think this is table scatter, and I'm not sure where it came from. I've had it for years. And then I'm gonna start placing down my mini pine cones, just a little at a time. I kinda go by what feels right when I look at it. Uh, if that makes sense and since i'm using it in my home that's the important thing do what feels right to you what feels good for you and don't worry about what it might look like to someone else unless you're selling them you know do what makes you happy trimming up this ribbon just putting a little slant on the edges and i'm getting the spider webs off from the glue then i thought this ornament that I got from Dirt Cheap. I think it came from Target. It looks like one of Target's uh, originally. Would be so pretty here. It's like a ceramic, but it's rough. It's not glazed, in other words. So there's two sides. One has a little bit of pencil mark on it or scuff marks. So I'm just going to use that side to place the glue down. I'm using hot glue because the surface is porous and rough on the house. So I think it'll fit just fine with the Gorilla Hot Glue. Now I'm taking another one of these same pieces that came off of a, a different ornament and I'm just gonna cut it down and these make cute little frosted trees, right? Like little snowy trees. So we're just gonna add those, give our house a little shrubbery out front. We want it to look like a farmhouse. Now it looks like it's nestled in the woods. Then I'm gonna trim it out with a little bit of the ribbon that we used on top. I flip that over, tack it down with a little glue on the back. Isn't that cute? I love this. I'm gonna take some jute twine, just feed it through that hole. And here is a simple knot that you can use so that you can hang it. Just put my two fingers in the loop grabbing the ends, pulling it and sliding the knot down. There you go. What do you think about that? Is that not the perfect little farmhouse mini tag? I love it. Okay, so our paint has dried and we're gonna use the glue stick again. We're gonna cover the surface of this quite well. Then I'm going to lay this down on top, press it just a little, and then I'm going to grab my ruler 
and then press it out just like we did the other one and you can see that the green is really standing out on there and the white background is nice and crisp because we painted first now we'll sand it I love this part. There you go. Beautiful little tag. Now, again, here are some ideas that you could use for your second tag. Those are both ornaments that I already had. And I decided to use some scrap pieces that I had both of these picks came from the Dollar Tree I just cut those pieces off and then these cute little gloves look at that they have fur on the top these originally came from Target but I got them at dirt cheap I'm just going to decide where I want to put them and then slide the knot down on the strings and just simply tape them on the back now, if you were going to give this as a gift, of course you would want to use, you would want to trim that down and then put some brown packing paper or something like that on the back to make it neater. Nobody's going to see mine. Then I'm going to glue the second glove a little on top of the other and then down on the tag. We can put our greenery down. This is why we don't throw scraps away. We keep them because... You can always use them for little pieces like this, little projects. Now I want this to lay flat, so I'm trimming off one side. Otherwise, when you put glue on it, it's not gonna lay flat. It's gonna stick up, and you're not gonna get a good grip on your surface. I don't want it to fall apart, so I'm gonna trim it down, then add my glue. You still have the dimension on the other side, so you're not losing anything by doing that. These little white pieces, to me, look like snow. And then I'm going to take this little piece of a pick, which I'm not sure where it came from, just to add a little red up there. Because I feel like this still says winter and it doesn't say Christmas. I'm going to use my chalk pen or chalk marker and just add a little bit of snow, just a little dusting of snow to the leaves. This does not have to be perfect. You can go right over the tips, or you can make lines, or however you want to do it. But I felt like since this was kind of a snowy theme for me, then I wanted to add some snow onto the greenery and onto my berries. You don't have to do this, though. Guys, be sure to follow me on Instagram and on Pinterest. I've got that information and the links in the description box below. I'd love to see if you're doing any of these projects. If you've done any, tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see what you've got. And if you have any pins from things that you've copied that we've done here, be sure that you send me your link so I can check it out. I also have my email in the description box if you would like to contact me. Or if you have any questions that you don't want to leave in the comments. And there you go. Two cute little winter mini tags that you could keep out in your decor or you could give as a gift, but it'll last all winter. No need to put these away when you put the Christmas tree up. What do you think? Which one's your favorite? I love them both, but I have to say the one with the little farmhouse is my favorite. Thanks for watching, guys. Come back and see me soon. Bye. Today, we're making high-end Dollar Tree ornaments. Keep watching. We're going to start off with this pack that you see me recently haul. This is a two-pack of ornaments that are coated and caked with glitter. 
and some type of adhesive. It looked like they'd been dipped, battered, and fried. So we're going to just go ahead and remove the tags. I've not seen this done before, so as far as I know, this is new to me. Hopefully it will be helpful to you. I'm going to take some very warm water and a little bit of dish soap. Take some sudsy water and then start soaking these. I soaked them for about mm, an hour probably and I'm just using a little wooden dowel to kind of agitate the water just a little bit from time to time. Just in case the movement might, you know, make some of that stuff fall off. But you can see here that you can scrape off that caked on mess. It's pretty thick. I don't know how many coats they put on there or what type of adhesive they use, but man, that stuff is thick. So I'm just taking one of these little scouring pads that I got at Dollar Tree just to see if it would help remove it, and that was a fail. Yeah, that's not gonna work. So we're gonna trash that. Give it a little more soak time. Okay, so now I'm just going to use my fingernail and start scraping this stuff away. You can see it comes off in chunks down there where the red areas are. This was quite satisfying. Really it was, cleaning this stuff up. I've, I always like to see something change you know, see a transformation from something that's maybe not so wonderful to something that's really great. And I felt like there was a lot of potential in these ornaments, and I'm glad that I did. Now this does take time, I mean, they're about 50 cents a piece since we paid a dollar for the set. You might not want to go through all of this trouble for, you know, an ornament that you could probably buy one that's white or clear or whatever. But I wanted to try it just to see if it could be done, to see if it would work. And after I have picked and picked and picked, um, and I did that with my fingers, and I uh, used a little bit of a, a little stick to kind of get in the cracks around the letters, then you come up with this clear plastic. And you can see right away, this is really, they're really nice. I like the font. And then there I have my tweezers getting out what remains. I like the font on these. And um, I guess that's filigree or the, the little swirly dids all around it. The frame I think is nice. I'm going to use black spray, spray paint on one of these. In a minute I'll show you the other paint for the other one. I'm just using my foam sanding block. There's some little nubs on here that you can't see when it's covered in glitter and paint. They're just little plastic little parts that kind of stick up a little bit. So I'm just trying to file those down so they're not so noticeable. And that's what you see me doing there, filling it with my finger to see. And then here's the other one. So we're using dark steel on one and black on the other one and I sprayed one good coat and let them dry in the sun and this is how they look. So now I want to adorn them a little bit, embellish them if you will, and I'm just taking some ribbons. Now those particular ribbons came from Dollar Tree. This one also came from Dollar Tree and they're not in the seasonal section. They're just over where you can get the regular ribbon. This one uh, came from Goodwill. This came from Dirt Cheap, but originally I think from the Dollar Spot years ago in Target. This one is thrifted. So what you want to do is just pick, you're going to work with one ornament at a time and see what colors that you like that coordinates for you. This is Dollar General Ribbon. It's wired. And then you're going to start piling your pieces together. This is a very easy bow to make. Now. On this one, I'm going to just kind of use a pattern here of X's with the same color 
ribbons one on top of the other. You don't have to do it this way. Uh, I just usually do it this way, but in a minute you'll see me do it a little bit differently. So there's your stack. And I'm just going to show you how you can use a twist tie that came from something else. And this is a plastic twist tie that I just had in my hand. And it came from probably something from Dollar Tree, holding an ornament or something to a package. But it's wired, so you could use that if you don't have floor wire or any Chanel stems or you run out or you just don't want to leave the house right now. You could just use that. Now I'm going to dovetail the ends of the bigger ribbons. If at first you don't succeed, try to drag in. You want those to be crispy ends. You don't want little bumps and square looking whatever because you want this to look high end, right? So this is what we're going to do to give it that look. Dovetailing as we go and pulling those apart and fluffing them up. If you get that wire tied it up in the middle, then you have you know, you'll be able to, your bow can withstand the tugging if you are trying to get those ribbons, you know, placed and spread out there. But if you don't get it tight enough, you'll pull them right out. So just be sure you do that. There's already a hole on the top where the original hanger was. And I am just going to feed one end of that wire through there. and then twist the other one around it to secure it. And then I'm going to make a little hang around the top from that wire. This, even with the bulk of this bow, barely weighs anything. So I think it will hang from the tree just fine. If not, go ahead and add a little hook to hang it from your tree. This would be really pretty on a package too if you wanted to use it as a package topper or a tag, something like that for Christmas. See what an easy and cute little bow that is? Really cute. And to keep it from flipping around, you know, that's why we put the hot glue on there. I want to embellish it a little further, and I thought these little white pom-poms would be great because they look like snowballs. And we have Frosty. We have Frosty on there. Plus, we have that black and white polka dot ribbon. I think it coordinates nicely. What do you think? So that's the first one. So you can still see a little bit of those little bumps where they were, but they're flat now. But you can still see them a little. I'm not bothered by that, though. If you are, this might not be the ornament for you. Alright, so we're going to give this one a more silvery or frosty theme. Not Frosty the Snowman, just Frosty Cold outside. And I'm going to dovetail the ends. And then on this one, I'm just going to start cutting ribbon that I think would coordinate nicely. And then we're just going to throw those down there randomly, not in a particular pattern. This is a Christmas Dollar Tree ribbon. And surprisingly, it's sheer and iridescent. It's really pretty. And I haven't used it yet in my projects because I thought it was uh, opaque, but it's sheer and it's, it's really pretty. This trim also came from the Dollar Tree in the Christmas section. And so this is me trying not to make a pattern. Yeah. See, my brain does not work like that. <laughs> but I thought I'd show it to you because it really doesn't matter and the end results are still going to be pretty. So on this one, I'm going to use a piece of thin ribbon to show you that you can use that. So there's another option to hold your things together. You don't have to feel like you need to rush out and you can't finish your project because you run out of wire or something like that. You can always, you can always find something that'll work. With crafting, that's the way it goes anyway, right? You just use bits and pieces of all kinds of stuff. So if you have bits and pieces of ribbon, then here you go. So there you go, one knot in the middle, and then we're going to double knot it to keep it secure. And then pull your bow 
to the sides and out so you can get it nice and fluffed. And look at that, isn't that pretty? It's slightly sparkly and it looks wintry and snowy, I think. This is a real simple tie for your ornament. It's just a simple, simple little tie, simple knot there, one knot, and then loop it back around so that the smooth ends on top. And it looks very finished once you've hot glued your ornament down. You could also feed those pieces of that thread or that thin ribbon through that hole if you want to, but I ain't got time for that. That's a lot of work with a little bitty, a little um, spot to have to stick it through. So it's easier just to hot glue that one. So that's an option for you also. Like I said before, they don't weigh a lot and it makes it easier to have, you know, more options. It's not gonna pull down or pull away from you. I hope that made sense. Okay, so there you go. And that's also the time to go ahead and trim down any ribbons that maybe slipped around while you were tying the knot and they weren't in the right place. I thought these snowy pine cones, which I got in a little bag at Dollar Tree, would be perfect to go on this one. And I think I was right. What do you think? Looks good. So you saw the before and here is your after. Two different options. What do you think? I think these turned out beautiful. Definitely by far a better look now. It's more high end. You have two different options. You can use them wherever you like or give them as a gift. Thank you so much for stopping by and crafting with me. I appreciate that you spend your time when you could be doing other things right here on my channel supporting me. Subscribe if you like budget-friendly decor and decorating ideas. See you soon. Bye. Today we're making this gnome wreath from Dollar Tree. Keep watching. We're going to start off with a Dollar Tree gnome. They have them in two sizes and this one is actually about six inches tall. So it's the smaller one. Haven't found the bigger one yet. Going to use some of this. It's like a velvet ribbon and it's wired and this came from Dollar Tree. This checkered ribbon came from Big Lots and it's the same size. It's kind of a burlap texture but if you have the black and white from Dollar Tree. You could always use that. That was from Paul. These are some picks from the thrift store and these are some random picks that I had left over from other projects that I've saved over the years. And then we're going to need mesh from the Dollar Tree which is the black and white. We're going to need a 14 inch wreath from the Dollar Tree, these wire ones. And then I thrifted this, um, this mesh right here. It came from the wheel. So this is the black and white that they had over fall, like I said, um, if you were lucky enough to get some of this. I wish I would have gotten more, but I didn't, but there is enough definitely for this project. We're going to start by wrapping this. If you've ever made a deco mesh wreath, then you know the procedure here. I'm just going to tie mine to the wreath rather than trying to make my first wrap with the wire here. Also, you might want to know that you can always put your pipe cleaners or chenille stems, whatever you want to call them, you can put those on the wreath first so that you don't have to do it as you go if you would like. But in my situation, I find that they snag a lot when you're trying to move around the wreath. So I'd rather just do it one at a time. And this is just procedure. So you'll see me put my hand toward the bottom of the screen there. I have a tape measure on the bottom, on the edge of my table, and I'm measuring 10 inch poofs. Now you just go from the tied area down 10 inches, kind of make a little poof area, push it toward the, so it's got some slack in it, and there you go. You have your little poofs. In order to keep the, your ties and your 
your mesh there to keep from slipping up and down, you're going to have to put it around that middle piece and the outer piece, and that's going to hold it in place at each one of those little points there where it has the crossbar. And that's what you want to do. You want to wrap it around both of those. Otherwise, if you just wrap it around the outside link by itself, it's going to slide up and down. And that is not going to be fun to have to deal with. So since I'm using this light gray color, I mean, you can use whatever color you have or want, whatever coordinates with what you're using. I thought that the gray looked great with the gray in the gnome and in his little hat. And it looks good with the black and white checkers also. Okay, so now we're going to go into the next ring. We're just going to start on the next ring up from where we started and do about 10 inches. Same thing, and you want to do that all the way around. Believe me, it gets worse before it gets better. Better. Hmm. Better if you've ever done these projects before. It, it, it looks kind of rough for a little while, but, but you're going to fluff it up and it's going to start to look better. So you're going to cut off when you're done with that, and we're going to start adding the black and white. I'm measuring it down there. And now I'm just making a little end to bundle up here, and I'm going to add it to the tie that's already there, and I am going with that. I think I'm in the second loop there, the second hoop. No, I know what I did. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. I got myself mixed up there, but yes. And it's going to kind of lie above and in between the first and the second row. Again, your pipe cleaners, you can cut those off when you're done with them. They're not going to be, they're not going to be showing. So you can remove anything that you don't need, but I'll leave them on here because I wasn't really sure what else I wanted to attach and they would have been convenient to be there when I got ready to add something on if need be. Be sure you subscribe and follow me on Instagram and on Pinterest and if you look below you can find in the description box that information. And I am working on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule, but there are definitely times when you get videos five times a week. Depends on how constructive and crafty I'm feeling. Okay, so that ring is done. I'm just cutting it off. You can see how that looks. And I'm gonna start making the little bundles that are going to go throughout the wreath. I picked this darker red here because it matches better with, you know, there's all kinds of shades of reds and um, this just happens to match better with that color that is on the gnome. I don't like to mix my reds. It really, it kind of bugs me, to be honest with you, to have like a dark red and then a, a orangey red. I, I just don't like that. So I tried to get this to match as good as possible and to match with the gnome as nicely as possible. So I'm cutting off eight inch pieces here and I'm going to make enough to go all the way around the wreath. One with the velvet, one with the burlap, and I'm just going to go ahead and dovetail all those ends. Make sure you do them all. And then pick a place to start. And I am going to start right there in the center of that black and white one. I'm going to keep the plaid or the checkered one on top. And I'm going to do that all the way around. You can see how it's attached. You just press it down, hold it securely, and twist that tie that is conveniently still there from the mesh that we wrapped around. It's wired ribbon, so you can fluff it out and give it a little bit of shape if you like. Or you can certainly wait until the end to do that. So who's finished shopping for Christmas? Anyone? Anyone? I'm not. And I don't know how closer I'm going to get. 
it's been a crazy year and uh, equally crazy holiday season for me I think for everybody so yeah may have some late things definitely aren't going to be able to participate in the holiday get-togethers that we enjoy so much every year but we got to keep our loved ones safe and that's what I'm gonna do okay so here we are on the last one and I'm gonna press it down just kind of hold it tightly there and twist that down now we can start to fluff out those little bow ends if we want to and I'm gonna add one more row of black and white I decided it looked a little little sad and sparse in the middle so on the very smallest ring there I'm gonna tie this on and then make I think the poofs are like maybe six inches they're a lot smaller I didn't measure them this time it was too difficult to measure um, but I think they were about six inches definitely smaller than the um, the ones we started with same process here you're just gonna wrap it and then tie it down I think this is a cute wreath that because of the red you could probably use it for Christmas you could definitely use it all through a winter I would think but that's my opinion it's not the colors that I am normally drawn to but I think it is so cute and I, I really like the way it turns out it's very very cute and I hope and hope and hope that some of you guys try this I know a couple of girls who are big supporters that that may be doing this at home. I've got some girls who like to craft together and um, yeah I think this would be a fun one to do. If you don't have that gray you can use any color you want. Anything you want that will match. They certainly have a lot of red if you can still find it in your stores. Maybe even white. Okay so now I'm just going to take these little pliers that I have and just clip off some extras and fluff out where they need to be fluffed. Now it's a silver wreath form underneath there thankfully so it kind of blends in. You don't notice it as much. I mean if you really make the effort to look at it, call it to your attention, you know, then you can see it but that does not bother me. Okay so I'm alternating pulling these out, these little tails out with like a dark on the top do you see how I have it there? Kind of makes an X shape, and I've just alternated it all the way around. Oh, it's so cute. I'm really loving it already. It, I think it looks cute. Trim off where you need to trim, like I said before just go ahead and cut off what is not needed if there's any on the inside that you can see I see some white ones in there that I probably did not clip off then you can go ahead and get those off and there's our little cute gnome you see how well he coordinates with the colors that are in the wreath looks really nice it's kind of a dark red I think so here are just my little picks I'm gonna wrap them with a little bit of the pipe cleaner to secure them down to my wreath form I'm going to do one on the left, one on the right, because this is going to be like a little a little staging area, if you will, for our gnome to stand. And feel free to fluff those out and bend them. They are wired, so you can bend those to get the position that you need. You know, you can get all kinds of little picks at Dollar Tree that you can use on this. And you can get red berry picks at Dollar Tree. So use that. Use what you have on hand that's left over if you, if you would like to. Now I just put the berries and one of those little pieces of greenery together. I'm going to press those down. And then I'm going to secure them with that little pipe cleaner that I wrapped around it. That's going to be the base of where our little gnome is going to 
stand or sit. I'm going to cut that little hanger off the top because he was a Christmas tree ornament. And I've decided that he needs a little white pom-pom ball on top of his hat. So just do that if you'd like. Or you can make a homemade pom-pom if you wanted to. See where we're going to set him. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this floral wire, press it through the back of his hat, and then twist him onto the mesh that is behind him so that he doesn't go anywhere. And you can actually do that on the frame if you would like. But he sat nice, nicely in his place right there. You could also glue the bottom onto your greenery if you wanted to for a little added security. But he sits there nicely. Then I decided, what if we use these as snowballs and we add one in the center of each of these little bundles? So what would you do? Would you leave it like that or would you add these little pom-poms? If you didn't have pom-poms, you could also use some of that. They have silver and white and white and gold table scatter. Those would be, that'd be something that you could use in there. It's just a little ball. You could use little ornaments if you wanted to use it for Christmas. A little peppermint candy ornaments or something like that would probably be cute. Or you could take some of those berries and put in the center if you wanted. These to me look like snowballs, and what says winter better than snowballs? Now just pull apart what you need to, fluff it up, fix your florals, fix your wires, and this is the end result. I think he's precious, and he's very welcomed at my home. So are you going to be trying this for yourself? If you are, I would love to hear about it. Tag me on Instagram. Show me how yours turned out. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that everyone has a very happy holiday. Remember to look for videos from me every week, and I will see you again very soon. Bye. We'll make this sign with a Dollar Tree gift bag. Keep watching. We're going to start off with a handful of supplies that I thought I might need. So this came from Dollar Tree. It is some decorative cording or ribbon. Got some plastic candy cane ornaments. Some ribbon. This one is wired, but you can certainly use non-wired because that's what I ended up using. It's a candy cane bag from Dollar Tree. Did I say candy cane? Candy cane bag from Dollar Tree. And this was with their Christmas section. And this was a canvas painting that I got at the thrift store and I peeled off the canvas part. And I will in a moment take my pliers and get the rest of that off going to use a piece of foam board also. This is going to be the backing for our bag to give it some sturdiness. So I'm just using a little utility knife. I've measured it against my frame and I'm cutting off the back. Making sure the fit is good. If it's not, you can go ahead and trim it or you can wait to trim it after you've got it glued down. We're not ready to glue quite yet because we've got to do some work on the bag. Take the hanger out by pressing the plastic back through that hole on each side and you're going to use that handle as a hanger on the back, so just set it aside. I've chosen the side of the bag that does not have the fold in it, so I have a nice flat surface to work with. Go ahead and cut along the trim of that, or the, the outside of that, so you get a nice, big, flat picture. I think rotary 
a rotary blade or a rosary, rotary scissor, whatever they're called, would probably be the best for this so that your lines are straight. You can see the little jaggedness in my lines there, but you can always clean that up. I want to kind of eyeball this to make sure that it is somewhat in the center. So I'm just getting an idea of where center would be. So when I put my frame on it, I can see my candy cane border. Using this glue stick, I'm going to cover the back. Nice and evenly. The most important, I feel like, would be the outsides and the edges so that it doesn't peel up. It's just pretty good coverage there. And you can see on the corner, the left bottom, where I made a little boo-boo when I was cutting, but that's okay. That happens when you're crafting. We're not going to throw the entire thing away just because there's one little rough spot. We can work with that. So I'm just pressing it down with my hands, and then I'm using my wooden ruler to make sure that it is pressed evenly down to the surface of that foam board. decided to use this trim to go around the edges to just kind of clean up where I've made my cut marks. This is a plasticky or coated type cord so it will easily the, the glue will kind of seep through the little openings in it so be sure that you protect your fingers. Use your little fingertip protectors. Mine came from Dollar Tree. Or you can use a little spatula or a little stick or something like that. Then I just want you to see how you turn the corner there. This type of trim works really well for that. It'll lay nice and flat for you in the corners. It kind of looks like gingerbread house trim, doesn't it? So if you're working on something that's gingerbread theme, or doing some projects with gingerbread, you might consider picking some of this up from Dollar Tree if it's still there because it's a cute little decorative trim, I think. We're going to go all the way around the bag picture with this to trim the entire thing out. Now, depending on the size of your frame, your canvas frame, you might not have to necessarily do the entire thing. I wanted to be sure that you didn't see that white board behind it when I put the frame back on it. So this is kind of my way of covering up my cut marks and making sure it's nice and neat when I put the frame back on. Here is some Fix-All adhesive that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to put that on first in a couple of spots around the edges and then I'm going to use my glue gun because a glue gun will give a quick seal and then the fix-all will make it more permanent. So see once I put the frame down you can't even see the trim on the sides. That is okay. Alright so I'm going to use that bag hanger, put some glue down, put a little piece of scrap paper on top to make our hanger. Here's an option for you if you don't like the plain wood and you want to zhuzh it up a bit. You can use some ribbon and just turn the corners and glue it down so you have a frame on top of your frame with a color. Or you can use a little piece of decorative greenery and a bow. My little piece of greenery came off of a vintage bell, so this was on the top of it. But I thought it would look good since we have holly and the berries on the candy cane picture. So it makes it perfect. I'm going to show you two different bows. First one we're going to do is like the, I think they call it a shoelace bow. Very simple. This ribbon I have is probably inch and a half, maybe an inch, and it has no wire in it. It's a ribbon that I like the color of, I like the polka dots, but it's just 
not that easy for me to work with in layered or stacked bows so I thought it would be good for these simple bows. I'm trying to use it for my Christmas decor. So there's the first bow. You can do it that way and trim it up or protecting your fingers. Take a length of ribbon. This was about eight inches. Double it on itself. Make a loop and then make a tail. I made this bow recently in another project. I think it was the candy cane yeah, I think it was the candy cane. And then we're going to just put that underneath, stack that on top. We're going to use a piece of green pipe cleaner just because the green coordinates, but you don't you don't have to. You can use any color. You're going to cover it up with your greenery. You could also tie it with some jute or you can use some floral wire here. Just hold that tightly and twist it so that it doesn't slip out and that you can adjust your bow just a little bit. You can trim off that piece in the back and decide where you want to put that, in the center or on the side. And I like the side, so I'm just gonna put it right there. A Little bit of hot glue, press the bow down so that it has some grip into that glue that'll hold it. And then I'm going to trim the back off of here, add a little glue to it, and put it right in the center. Rather than dovetailing, I want to show you something else you can do to trim up your bow, and that's just cutting it at an angle. Simple. So there's my little bow. Just to show you here, you can see where the trim is under there. You can always stain this wood. It's just raw wood. If you want to have a darker, a darker frame, you can certainly do that. You can paint it. You can use some chalk paint or acrylic paint to make it whatever color you would like for it to be. For me personally, I think that the raw wood is a nice touch. So would you call this traditional or would you call this farmhouse? I just think it's pretty. What do you think about these Dollar Tree bags? Have y'all been using those in projects yet? They are really handy and they make some beautiful high-end looking signs. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Bye. We're going to repurpose a Dollar Tree sign. Keep watching. A couple of supplies you might need might need some paint, a floral pick, some wooden adhesive stickers, some ribbon, and then I have an emery board there. I've already painted the back of this sign, and you can see here that it was a summer sign from Dollar Tree. I used two coats of white chalk paint and let it dry well. So I've decided that this is how I want my stickers to be placed. And I'm going to start putting my ribbons on. Now you'll see in a minute, I changed this up, but for now, this is what I started with. And this is a Dollar Tree ribbon. It's sort of a burlap type of material. I wanted to use it for the cap for the jar. And it does fit there, so you can certainly use this if this is what you want to use. So after you gluing it down, I've taken this red nail file. This way I wouldn't have to get out paint and the sticks. I just went ahead and clipped off a piece of this to use for the straw. It's a holiday DIY, so I thought the red would be a nice little added touch. I've just cut a piece down that will fit there over the white straw area 
and then I am filing down with my sanding block just to make sure I get my edges even. It would drive me nuts if I hung it on the wall and did not have an even edge. I would likely take it down and, and start over. Do those kind of things bother you? I don't know why they bother me, but they do. So it fits perfectly, and I'm just going to take a little bit of hot glue, and I'll put it on the larger surface so I wouldn't burn my fingertips. And press it in place. So there is the straw in the top of our mason jar. Next, I'm going to make the band around the middle, and I've decided to use this thrifted burlap. This is about four, maybe five inches, if I had to guess. Pretty sure I did not measure it. And that's a little bit large, but rather than cutting it and having it fray, I have decided <laughs> that I am going to fold it over and then glue it down. Rather like hemming it, but we're going to use hot glue. There are so many conversations that go on while I'm crafting downstairs. My husband actually came downstairs while I was doing this one and we were chatting about a few things. But oftentimes you'll see my kids down here, their little hands on the edge of the table. We talk about whatever. I add a little glue here and there for my daughter while she's doing her craft projects because she likes to craft with me. This happened to be a day that they were at school, so I had basement to myself. Okay, I just used the clamps here that came from Dollar Tree just to hold it in place until the glue dries. And we remove it. We have nice clean edges. And I'm going to put this piece of black and white checked buffalo check, whatever you want to call it, right centered in here. I've already measured this against the the jar and it is enough to go around the sides so that it could be very neat on the front and be glued in the back. You want to have enough that you can glue it in the back so you don't have to put glue in the front and have some frayed edges showing. It gives it some dimension and I like that. I'm going to pull it where there's no buckling in it, clamp it down my handy dandy scissors trim it up and then I'm going to put some glue in there to hold it in place like I always say use your little finger protectors if you have them that glue will go right through burlap So now I do not like that there is a little difference in the color of the ribbon on the top and the burlap that's on the bottom. I was going to see if maybe I wanted to use the checkered ribbon on the top, but I decided against it. So I want this to still be a burlap texture and color on the top. So I'm just going to fold this over and use this and I think it looks so much better. Trimmed off the wire edge so that it wouldn't be too bulky on one side. Once that piece is dried, you can remove the clamps and then we'll be using them again to do this. Some hot glue. Again, this is burlap. You will burn yourself if you don't use your finger protectors. Or you could also use a little rubber spatula, silicone spatula, something like that. And again on this side. The little edges that are squared over there, I want to give it a more finished look, so I'm just adding a little glue and then rolling that over with my fingers. 
and clamping it down until it holds. And it gives it, um, I think, a nicer look. I don't want the bottom of my little straw to show, so I've just pulled that up. And I like this much better than the, the first option that I tried. Okay, so these actually had um, paper on the back, like a wax paper on the back, and they are a sticker underneath. So they have adhesive already on them. Um, I don't know what happened to the clip of me actually peeling those off and putting them on, but that's what I did. I just centered them there and pressed them down. They have a really good hold. So I'm going to put a bow on the top and I am using some of that same black and white checked ribbon to make a simple shoelace bow to put on the top. You can leave this this way if, if you like it. You can use something different. You can use this, that burlap ribbon that we used before to put a bow on there if you want to. Or you can stop here and not use a bow at all. Make it yours, remember? We're making it our own on this channel. Always watch videos for inspiration, but never feel the need to do exactly what somebody else does. And if I ever come close that I am aware of to someone else's project, if there's a copy of something that I've not seen and I'm not aware of, then obviously I can't give credit to that person. But if I see something like on Pinterest, then I will give credit to where that idea originally came from. It's just the right thing to do. To give people credit for their creativity. So I needed a little bit of greenery on here naturally. I'm gonna take the Dollar Tree pick and cut those leaves apart. And because the bow is bulky, I don't want a lot of bulk here, so I want this to be kind of flat. The idea of this project is to be simple, but festive. So that's all glued into place. The back looks terrible. You can cover that. You could have always painted that back side, or you could cover it with some background crafting paper if you would like. This is going to be flat on the wall so no one will see the back of this. And at some point it may be repurposed to another project. Just taking a loop of chenille stem and making a hanger on the back, making sure that it doesn't go over the top of the edge of my sign. A little hot glue and then a piece of scrap cardboard paper to hold that in place. I'm going to fluff up that bow and make sure that it is looking nice and spry. And I decided that because those berries originally, the uh, dark red berries, they didn't really show up against the dark green. So I decided to just take another pick that I got from Dollar Tree and just cut those berries off and put them there. And I think that is a much better option. It also matches better with the straw on the top of the mason jar. So what do you think? This is the complete project. It didn't take long to do this at all. It's simple and expensive, and it's exactly how I wanted it to be. Thanks for stopping by my channel and watching my videos. I appreciate all the support as usual. If you like budget-friendly decor and DIYs, consider subscribing to the channel. And comment below if you have any requests for Christmas crafting that I might consider doing for a future video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye. Today we're making deer decor from Dollar Tree. Keep watching. We're gonna start off with this deer piece of Christmas decor. You can get it in silver or gold, but I've chosen gold. Just gonna remove the tags and the hanger. We're going to need two of these signs that you can get at Dollar Tree. They are wooden signs. I'm going to use my sanding block and just sand off where I have removed the stickers.
And we're going to use the white sides on the outside so the decor, the decorative part will be on the inside. So when I had a mind to do this, I was trying to figure out how I wanted to put my deer's little feet in there to hold them up. I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue. just to keep them in place while I put down my other glue. So I'm using some wood glue here and I'm just gonna brush some of that on on both pieces. I'm going to leave some space in between to use the hot glue. I'm not mixing the two adhesives, I'm just putting them just randomly in little spots. Press these together. Now I've used a clamp here and I've used a piece of paper underneath to keep my clamp from making marks on my boards. You're going to let that dry for 24 hours before you remove the clamps. To give it some extra security, I've used short staples and my staple gun and gone around the ends and the bottom. You can go back over this with some white chalk paint if you'd like, but I didn't. They can see there on the hoof, it's chipped off a little bit. Not gonna be a problem because I'm gonna have an arrangement down there and it'll cover it up. This is rather, I want to say floppy. It's not very um, sturdy. Maybe when you do this, you could put two deer together. I'm not sure. But my way of remedying this and having it stand upright is to use these building blocks or these um, tower, tumbling tower blocks that came from Dollar Tree. You get them in a box in the children's section, in the toy section. I'm going to use that and a little bit of wood glue and a little bit of hot glue on the bottom to secure the legs of the deer so that the body will stand upright. This is going to be a one-sided sign, but you could certainly do both sides if you wanted to put it as a centerpiece or something like that. For me, this was good enough. It's going to be on a shelf, most likely, so only one side will be shown. I'm going to sandwich the deer's legs between these and hold them so that the hot glue will sit up and give that wood glue some time to sit up as well. I have some clamps that I got from the like the laundry section or the home section of Dollar Tree and I use them for quite a bit of projects and they work nicely for this. You can use whatever type of clamp that you want. You just want to be sure that you give that plenty of time because it would be a shame to spend all that time getting the base and everything together and then snapping off one of those legs. That would be terrible. So I'm just going to slide that block down just a little bit so that I can hide it behind the leg a little better. Mm -hmm. 
So now he's standing upright a little bit better. I'm gonna clamp that on and let that hot glue dry. Now it's time for the floral area. I'm gonna use one side of it and I'm gonna use just this scrap of foam that came from, I think one of my Amazon packages. It was thin enough to sit here. So I'm hot gluing it down. You can put another piece sandwiched on the other side if you'd like for a little extra support. And certainly if you're going to decorate both sides, you'll need a piece of foam on the back side as well. These are some pieces of greenery that I picked out of some clearance. They were like little pots last year at the at-home store. They were 39 cents, I think, so I got several of the little pots. Now I'm removing my clamp so I have a little more room to put in my greenery. I'm just giving it a little run to see if this is how I want it to look, and I think this will work. So a little hot glue will keep this all pretty much in place, both in the foam and to the, the base there. And I do have some chalk paint on my hand from another project, so I was trying to get a lot done. We have a birthday Halloween party coming up and family coming for the weekend, so I was trying to get a couple of these videos done it all at once. Now you see I pulled the foam up. I do actually fix that, but I edited it out somehow. But I did glue it back down. You want to be sure that you have everything secure there so it's not falling apart. Just want to play around and see what kind of height you want, how wide you want it to be. I wanted this arrangement to be rather low and wide so that I can still see my deer. That's what the focus is going to be, is the deer. These frosted or snowy picks, they're so pretty. And I knew that I wanted to use them for something this year for Christmas. If you don't have something that you've thrifted or pieces that you've already had you can certainly take pieces from the Dollar Tree they have lots of gorgeous picks and you can use those you can flock some old Christmas tree branches if you'd like and use an old wreath and just clip pieces off of that however you however you want to do this just make it your own any color thing that you like. I prefer more rustic look. So that's why mine looks like this. But you do whatever you like. The arrangement cost me very little money. The longest time it took was just allowing that wood glue to dry. Otherwise, it was an easy project to do for the results that I, I think that we got. Remember what I've said in other videos, be sure that you take a good look from all angles and see if you have any spaces that need a little something else. And if you do, just go ahead and add that in. Here's an example of that. There's a little spot that needs a little something extra. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue and fill in that spot. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you like this project, that you'll try something with one of these 
deer decor pieces. I'm not the biggest fan of glitter, but it looks very nice with this piece, I think. Thanks for stopping by and watching. I appreciate your support so much. If you'd like to make gorgeous, inexpensive decor, consider subscribing. I'll see you again soon. Bye. We're making a festive Christmas sign with Dollar Tree calendar. Keep watching. Dollar Tree has an array of beautiful calendars with lots of farmhouse and rustic designs. In this calendar, we're going to use the December picture. This is Simply Blessed. And then I'm going to use this Dollar Tree sign. It's just something that was from Christmas. It's a square. So here are my ideas of some embellishments for this sign. I've got some picks, some pine cones and berries. You can use whatever you want, but I think these reflect what's in that picture, so I think they'll make a good fit. I'm going to remove this hanger from the sign. It's just jute and it's got a little plastic backing. You can just press that through. You can use it again if you want. Then I just started to peel this off because you can see where it was overlapped, but it did not come off very nicely. So yeah, I didn't fool with that for too much. I'm gonna take off this little, I think it's a sun and we'll save it for later. So you see it's almost a perfect fit. I'm going to go ahead and tear off, keeping that edge as clean as possible. You can cut it if you want. And then I'm just going to fit it over here. I've decided since the page is white to go ahead and use the back so that you don't see all of that design through. I'm going to take a pen or a pencil, whichever one, and trim it out. We're going to cut that excess off. Be sure that you use the back of it because you don't want to see any ink on the front of your picture. I'm going to use a trusty old glue stick and just give a nice even coat of that glue stick all over the back. You can see I've got a very nice coverage there. I've done it this way so I don't have to put any on that paper. You can use the Jot glue stick to get at Dollar Tree if you'd like. I use it often. This is just one I had on hand nearby. Okay, so I've got it centered and I'm just going to press it out, make sure there's no bubbles or wrinkles. And then using my wooden ruler, I'm just rubbing it across there to make sure that everything is nicely stuck down to that sign in the back. The hole in the top where it hangs, you could just take a paint pen or a chalk pen or chalk marker and just fill that in if you'd like. And I did have to do that more than one time because it, that particular pen I used was not very good. Using my sanding foam block from Dollar Tree, I'm going around my edges to give it a nice finished look. It's not a very long process and it is a very satisfying process. I've slowed it down a little bit so you can see what happens here. It just shears it right off the edge. And then the sign, if you have the glue all the way over to the edges, the sign is going to look like it was made this way. You'll never know that it was a DIY. It just very nicely comes right off. You certainly don't have to use, do this step if you don't want to, but just be sure that you've glued your edges down so that it won't peel up if you choose not to do it. And the good thing about a glue stick is you don't have to wait for anything to dry. All right, two options for bows here. This is the one I started with. Rather than editing it out, I thought you might like to see what your options could be. So I've got three different ones here. I've got the bow maker tool that I made. I'll link that video for you. 
And then I'm just going to measure out my tails and they are about eight inches long. And begin making some loops. You loop the fabric over or the ribbon over and you just pull it down in between the two dowels. If you have a bow maker, if you've purchased a bow maker, then you're probably already familiar with how to make a, I, I'm just gonna call it a rather simple bow. We're going to do three stacks of two loop bows. Well, I guess it would be one stack with three two loop bows. There we go. So I'm just showing you this in slow motion in case you haven't used it yet and you're still getting used to how to do it. And I've got a little closer look for you here. You choose your next ribbon to go on top. And when you have a ribbon that has two sides that are the same, you don't have to flip it in the middle, but you do need to twist it if you have a printed side and a non-printed side. So that's what I've done here. You just pinch it and twist it in the middle so that your pretty side is up. And then trim it off. And then we're gonna do the same thing for that checkered ribbon. Each one of these bows is a little bit smaller going toward the top. So there's a five inch bow, a four inch bow, and a three inch bow. The three inch bow is on the top and the five is on the bottom. Grab it in the middle, pull it off, and then get your pipe cleaner or your chenille stem, your wire, whatever you want to use, and you're going to twist it while you hold it tightly in the center. You want to twist it tightly so you can fluff your bow out. So when I did this, <clears throat> I decided that it was a little too much for what I wanted on this simple, simple sign. So I've decided to take it apart and do something that's a little more simple. So if you don't have a bow maker, here's an option. I saw this bow on Olivia's romantic home and she calls it the Olivia bow. I've just made this bow, I folded it over on itself. You don't have to twist anything so that there will be two loops on either side. Then you fold it, get your center and make tiny cuts in the outside. I'm just pretty much going through the wire and just a tiny, tiny bit of that fabric. Then I'm gonna twist it up with this wire until I can get the next layer ready. I'm gonna do the same thing with this. These are wired ribbons. Flip this over and then one more time. There's two here and two here. So I'm gonna find the center and put that loose end on the outside. I don't know that it makes a difference, but I put it there. And then notch the sides again. So now we're gonna stack these two together. Press the wire right into the little notches. And then you wanna twist it tightly in the back and then start to pull your bows and twist. Pull and twist. Just pull on that little tail out there too. Pull and twist. This, I loved making this bow and I will definitely be making more like this. So if you're a fan of Olivia's, go over to Olivia's Romantic Home and she'll show you how to make all kinds of cool things. Okay, that little tail was just a little bit too short, so I just snipped it straight across to kind of hide it. And then it's kind of raggedy on the end here, so I'm going to make a little dovetail. And always, of course, finishing off the ribbon tails with the dovetail or slant, just as long as you don't have a frayed edge there. I want to put this in the corner. Now I have to make some tails. 
I'm going to do that with both of these. I'm just pretty much folding it in half and then pressing it to the side, pulling it to the side just a little bit, dovetailing it. So you can see how those are made. Pretty easy. You want to put them together with a little bit of hot glue. I put the, the checkered part on top since the checker is on the top of the other bow, but it doesn't really matter. It's just my preference. And I'm going to attach that and kind of make a little run through of how I want things to be on the back there. And take some hot glue, put it up in the corner so that it is not obstructing my good tidying sign. And give it just a second to sit up before you start pulling on it. Then you're going to add some glue and start placing down the, the picks or the cones or whatever type of greenery you have that you want to put there. You can get these little pine cones at Dollar Tree in a bag. I think they are in the floral section, but they may be with the Christmas stuff. It probably just depends on your store. The polka dot ribbon came from Dollar Tree. The plaid ribbon came from the thrift store. The two little picks that are on the sides came from the Target um, Bullseye Playground last year, but I actually got them at Dirt Cheap. And fluff that bow. Okay, so I wanted to put a little something extra here in the top, and I'm adding one more of those little picks there. Now we gotta make our hanger. So I'm just cutting a piece of jute, and I'm going to glue it into the original holes in the back with a little piece of scrap ribbon to hold that in place. And there we have it. This is our first Christmas wreath, our first Christmas sign or decoration for the holiday season. I will be having a Christmas 2020 series, so be sure that you subscribe and stay tuned to that. I appreciate you stopping by, and I will see you again real soon. Bye. Today we'll make a simple gingerbread house. Keep watching. I'm going to start off by repurposing this little Halloween sign because this is going to be the base of our gingerbread house. Just peel that off and there's a little felt that is left over here so I'm just going to Go ahead and take that off. I got this little sign at Dirt Cheap and it originally came from Target. It's going to need a little bit of work before it's ready for our gingerbread house, which is neutral. So I'm going to use this black furniture marker that came in a three pack from Dollar Tree, of course. I do recommend that you use shorter strokes instead of the long strokes so that you don't have any streaking. So this works a little bit better than these long strokes. Still had some streaking in there. You're going to let that dry. It's pretty quick drying and then you can add another coat to that and another if you need it. But this purple is pretty vibrant so I wanted to be sure that I got it all covered up. And it's okay if you get a little bit on the house itself when you're painting or when you're brushing this on because it's going to be covered up by the paper that we're going to put down in just a moment. And you actually can make this a two-sided sign if you would like. Give yourself two opportunities to get it exactly how you like it. All right, then we're going to take the craft paper that comes from the Dollar Tree. Sometimes you can find this by the shipping material, and then it could also be with wrapping paper. You can place it down and just trace it out. 
when in doubt when you're cutting these things out um, when they're papers you know because you can sand them off it's okay to leave them a little bit bigger or to cut them outside of the line you don't want to cut them too small so that you have the underneath part or the base of your house showing you want to be sure that you have enough to cover it and give it a smooth finish because you want this to look as close to you know as perfect as you can get it there's nothing worse than finishing a project and looking back at, back at it and thinking, oh my gosh, I should have done this, that, or the other. And then it's too late. So, I'm going to run out of glue here and switch over to my Dollar Tree Jot glue stick. Be sure you get close to the edges so that holds your paper down, especially when you're, when you're sanding. I use my wooden ruler to get this nice and straight and flat and see the little wrinkle there that's easy to fix and just gently push that with that wooden ruler push it straight out i've never tried the plastic ruler or the metal ruler for this so i don't know it may be just as good but you know when you find something that works you tend to stick to it so that's what i did i've got my sanding foam block that came from dollar tree and i'm just going around the edges sorry that I'm out of the frame there there you go so you're gonna go down and away from the project and it's gonna take the edges off there also if you've gone around the entire project and colored your because you want to cut the bottom with the pen and you want to go around all the edging when you sand some of that may come off that's okay just go back over it with your marker um, being careful not to get that back onto your paper which is also a benefit of using the pen rather than using a brush because it's so much easier to control. You can use the metallic pen from Dollar Tree that's white. You can use chalk writers. You can use chalk pens or acrylic markers. And I do happen to have a new package of acrylic markers that my husband bought for me from Amazon. I'm very pleased with them. I wanted to try them so it's a perfect project. You can for the shingles on the roof, you can use a curved surface like a popsicle stick or a crab stick, the end of the metal ruler from Dollar Tree. For me, I'm just going to freehand it. And I'm just making curves, almost like waves that you draw when you're a child. The little waves that you draw for water in the ocean, that's what you're going to draw right here. And the peak of each one or the high point of each one is going to hit the center of each one above it. That's just how I did mine, but you can do yours any way that you like. Those little dots that I've drawn don't really have any particular purpose. They're just little embellishments, just like the little dots that are on here. If you look on Pinterest or any other if you Google how to make a gingerbread house, you're going to see a variety of ways that you can do it. I like the curves and I like the dots. So that's what I'm using, but you don't have to do it that way. This is just not to tell you exactly what you need to do. This is to give you a guide and show you what I'm doing because this is the first time that I have done a gingerbread house. And, you know, I'm sure as I do more of them, I'll venture out and, and do something a little more maybe complicated or challenging but right now I'm going to do you know it's my first time I want to be sure that I do the best that I can do but something that I can be proud of when I'm done okay so you can use an ink stamper you can use a little box a square any type of guide that you want to make your little windows if you want them to be somewhat symmetrical and so that's what I've done here and they are not centered on the house but the you know the house is also not symmetrical and that's okay all right so I am just going to follow roughly my pencil lines to make some windows so now I have a door and windows and the roof on my house putting some more dots here and to try to space them more evenly I'm doing the corners the center and then splitting the difference it helps give me a guide too if I decide I want to put 
shutters or anything else on there. I've got a little somewhat of a guide. So you'll see me pausing quite a bit because I'm trying to decide what I want to do before I actually do it. And I did not use a any type of pencil to do the little embellishments. So I'm just trying to do this slowly and go over this slowly. You can use any type of design that you like. These little arches almost look like a mustache, don't they? Okay, so just like piping on a gingerbread cookie, I'm making some little layers here. They don't have to make sense. This is all whimsy. This is whimsical. This is make-believe, pretend, childlike. You know, it's playful. You're supposed to see it and go, oh, how cute. Not, oh, wow, those windows are not even. No, that's not what we do. Not with a gingerbread house. You could certainly do this with your children, with your grandchildren. You could just maybe use the scissors and cut things out for them and then give them the chalk writers or the chalk markers and just let them go crazy. They can use markers and glitter and sequins and you can get all those things at Dollar Tree so you're not spending a lot of money. It's still affordable and you're making that memory that, oh, you just can't replace it. My little girl is crafty. She loves to craft along with me. And this is just... She wasn't there the day that I did this to participate, but I know when she sees it, she's going to want to do one too. And I'm sure my little nephews would probably love doing this as well. You could even use little theme stickers if they like Paw Patrol or if they like superheroes or strawberry shortcake or Peppa Pig. If you can find the little, the little stickers, you can always use them. Do whatever you want to on this. You don't have to use white. You can use different colors. Make it really cheery and bright and colorful. So I feel like I want my lines a little bit thicker. I'm just going to go back over them. You can do that. You don't have to do that. I could have just started off with the thicker tip marker and probably would have been just absolutely fine doing it that way and saved a little bit of of time but honestly this is a good way if you if you're gonna call something a time waster this is a good way to do it I had a lot of fun doing this I used to doodle and draw when I was younger and even on up into high school and part of my adulthood there's just something that goes along with being an adult and you you start seeing the reality of the world and you start being responsible quote unquote and a lot of the things that bring us joy as a child, we just let go of that. And I think Christmas time and just crafting in general is the perfect time for us to try to recapture a little of that joy. So I really encourage you to do this. You don't have to be somebody who prides themselves on the way that they draw. You can see here, this is circles, semicircles, dots, squares. There is nothing special that I'm doing here. You can definitely do this. Google it, go to Pinterest, look on Instagram, watch other videos of YouTubers who do gingerbread themed um, crafts, and just try it. It's so easy to do. And you know, if you make what you might call a mistake or an error, just add you another layer of paper on top of this and start over. If you're staying at home a lot with this pandemic, this is the perfect time for you to be to be doing this, practicing your skills. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you who have subscribed to my channel. I'm at almost 170 and I have been doing YouTube videos on this channel since I believe August 
So I'm very happy with that. And the best way to show that you appreciate what you see on this channel and what we're doing on this channel is to subscribe. It shows your support. And when you give a thumbs up or you like my videos, it shows YouTube that what I'm doing is worthy of time, you know, of your time that you thought it was interesting enough to stop and, and hang out with me for a little while. So I appreciate every like, every comment, the thumbs up. It all means, it really means a lot to me. So welcome if you're new. I have another one of these gingerbread houses coming up really soon with the same form. So be sure that you subscribe to watch that. I'll see you again soon. Bye. I'm going to show you two ways to dress up the Dollar Tree candy cane. Keep watching. So we're going to be working with the smaller tinsel covered piece of decor candy cane. This is not the actual metal frame that you can get, but there is a metal a metal one too that's larger than this. You could do it the same way, pretty much, as far as wrapping and such. But we're going to use the smaller one today. I'm going to try to keep this tinsel intact uh, as much as I can because I can use this again on another project or since my children like to craft, I can give them all the little bits and pieces to do their own crafts. So we'll really be stretching the dollar there. Just gonna cut one piece in the white and one piece in the red and start unwinding. They're wrapped around these little nubs that stick out. Don't worry about those, we're gonna got a solution for that shortly as well because we are not going to be using the same winding method with our ribbon. So there we go, lots of sturdy tinsel. I'm gonna take my bull nose pliers and just start cutting off these little pieces. Now the reason to the, remove these is that I'm going to be using sheer ribbon on one option and then I'm going to be using a yarn on the other option and I don't want it to snag anywhere and poke holes in there. So we want to have a smooth surface. We're going to start with this red and silver cane. I'm going to take this wired ribbon and wrap around starting by just tucking it into the bottom and then start wrapping it around the outside of the candy cane all the way up and around. There is going to be a spot on the bottom of the candy cane and on the top back side that need to be patched but I'm going to show you how to fix that where it looks fairly seamless. Definitely not per perfect but you know it would be okay if you wanted to use it on a glass door for instance it would be neat enough on the back that it wouldn't be a problem I think. This ribbon option was much easier than the yarn that I'll show you in just a minute. So I guess you could say that this will be more of a, I wouldn't necessarily say traditional, but maybe modern option. And then we'll do a rustic or farmhouse option in just a moment. So be sure that you hang out with me a little bit longer and I'll show you. Alright, going to use a little hot glue. Careful, careful. This is sheer and it is very thin. You will burn yourself if you are not very, very careful. So I'm just using my scissors to help me hold it because I've dropped my spatula on the floor somewhere. Alright, so we want to neaten up the end and cover up where we tucked it in. I'm just going to use a tad of glue there and then I'm going to make a little patch for it. You certainly can skip this part if you're not going to be putting it where the back side will be seen. And if, obviously, if you're not going to be selling it, then it doesn't matter. If you use it in your own home, it doesn't bother you. It's fine the way it was. But see, this option makes it a little bit neater. Then we're going to work on the top. Same process here. You just want to try to, to cut a piece that will cover that spot. 
and just neatly tack it down with the glue. To close it off and that makes it a little bit better so there we go I'm going to show you a couple of options here first one is the original bow and snowflake from the original ornament or you can make your own this bow that I'm going to show you is called the funky bow you're going to cut 12 inch strips three of each of these colors and this ribbon came from the wedding section of the Dollar Tree be sure you look all around the store when you're looking for your, your ribbon and your tools and things like that because they could be in a variety of places. There's not as much on these rolls, maybe three yards on these rolls, so not as good of a value for your dollar, but you know, still nice, still a good value, I think, for a dollar. So we're going to take these and stack them together. You can stack them randomly. You can stack them like I did with the white together and the silver. It really doesn't matter. You're going to pinch them right in the middle and wrap a piece of floral wire around it. Then you're going to fluff out the ears or the top pieces. That's going to be the top of your bow. Always use the wired ribbon if you want it to stand out in these bigger bows. And then you're going to start pulling the tails that were on the bottom up on the sides. To me, this bow kind of looks like a flower. So you had a bunch of petals on the top and the little leaves spread out around it on the top. And you just pull it out and around to get it the shape that you like. Same thing with the top. And then you can start making some dovetails in your ribbon if you like or whichever whichever way you want to do it you can hot glue this down or you can wire it down but for me since I'm going to show you another option with this same candy cane just giving you an idea okay this one's a little more complicated takes a little more time first off you're gonna need to tie a knot and then you're going to wrap it toward the underside where it's concave. Then you're going to take the rest of that and wrap it, weave it through the bottom because you want to cover up your red frame. You can certainly take this outside, spray paint it if you want to so that nothing shows. But I'm going to show you what to do if you don't have spray paint because a lot of people don't have spray paint. You don't have to use this thick yarn that I have. This came from Goodwill and it had no label on it so I'm not sure where it originally came from. You can either get thick ribbon or you can use Dollar Tree options like the cotton rope or some of the um, I don't know if it's a burlap rope or jute rope something like that. They do have some options and you can use that. Even if you wanted to be really wacky and whimsical about it you could use some of the clothesline rope which comes in a variety of colors and it's nylon and you can use that but I've got the end finished there and I'm going to start wrapping my yarn around it keep those rows close together as you can and then use a little bit of hot glue to tack them together you just press them down give them just a second for the glue to set up and then anytime you see a little bit of space, just go ahead and put you another dot of glue. It doesn't take a lot. Just little dots here and there. And then continue to wind it around the cane. And you're gonna do that until you get to the top of that straight piece. See, I'll wrap a little bit and then push the rows together. And that's when you want to add your glue in between. You could probably do maybe a nautical candy cane option if you like that the beachy look at Christmas time. 
That would be cute too, but this makes a good, I think, farmhouse or rustic look. Country, some people have like a country theme. You're gonna need a little more glue around the curves. I don't wanna get it too bulky in the center here. So I'm going to cut it off, add a little hot glue and put the clip on the back to let it sit up for a moment while I work on the end of the candy cane. So we're gonna do this end the same way we did the other one. I'm gonna tie a knot, put it toward the inside, and then start wrapping the bottom. Get that close together so you don't have any gaps where the red frame is gonna show. And maybe it wouldn't bother you, you know, if it's showing, but it would drive me nuts. I know myself well enough. And then you're gonna stuff it on the inside, put a little bit of glue on there, whatever you need to do to make it stay. Now I'm adding my yarn rope back on there and I'm going to do the same thing as before, get to glue it down to the bottom, the first row. And then start the winding again. If I knew ahead of time all the ingredients you would need for what we're making on these crafts, I would definitely post that ahead of time for you. But most of the time, I don't get my ideas that way. I'll have some inspiration, I'll get an idea, and then I don't really know what I'm going to be using completely until I am doing it. So I don't make a good list in the beginning. And I do apologize for that if your your mind works that way and, and I'm not helping you with that. Okay, here we go. We're wrapping back and forth now to get around the center. It's going to get a little bit bulky there in the center. But that's where we're going to put our bow. So that really won't matter. See there how it's got kind of a thicker spot in the center? There's a little gap in there where we will tie our bow. I wanted to use this really pretty Dollar General ribbon. It is wired, I believe it's a two inch ribbon and it's got the red truck on it. I'm going to make a loop of this. This is, I think about a 10 inch loop. It's a 10 inch piece of ribbon. It's gonna be smaller than that once you glue it. You're just gonna make a loop and while you're letting that dry, you're going to take another piece of ribbon that's going to be the tails. And I saw Caitlin from Crafts by Caitlin do a bow similar to this, and it's so simple. I'm going to use a piece of jute in the center and tie it off. And so honestly, there's no way to really even explain to you how to do this bow because you just saw me do it. It was that easy. I'm going to make sure that my bow, that the knot is in the center and I'm going to make a double knot. Then I'm going to dovetail the ends. And I'm going to string one piece of that jute through the middle and then tie it down. And that's simple. Simple enough, right? Okay. You can trim off your pieces of jute there and fluff the bow. We're going to add one more thing on here. Some of these bells. I got these from Dirt Cheap and I have no idea where they originally came from. But you can get these anywhere pretty much in the Christmas sections. These look like they're tarnished and old so I really like that about them. I think it gives a good rustic look. I'm just doing double knots and a touch of glue there so they don't slip out. Then I'm going to wrap it around the center of the bow and let them hang down. And that is that. Now, if you want a hanger, you can use a piece of this stem. Make your loop. Close the end. A little hot glue, a little paper. 
paper band-aid there and you are good to go. So those are your two options. I use the same candy cane to do both of them. So the final result is this one, which is the rustic farmhouse look, which is what I enjoy in my home. I certainly hope you enjoyed it. Which one did you like best? Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you again soon. Bye. Click on a square or circle below for more. Thanks.